How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. I am going to make a bench block. It's going to be a little bit bigger than your average bench block today. Um, it, I'm calling it more like a little bench anvil. <laughs> so let's take a look at it and uh, sh I'll show you a, pr a drawing of what I plan on doing to it. This is what 1450 looks Look at like. All the stars out, no doubt I'm loving this time of year. Someone's got it. This piece here is one of the uh, cutoff ends of the large grater blade that I trimmed up, right, for the top plate of the ammo stand. And you just saw it in the heat treat oven. I, this is out of the heat treat oven and cooled now. I heated it to 1450 for two hours. I had two pieces in there that's basically the same size. Two, and then I just turned it off. And it sat about 11 hours in there. And when I opened it in the morning, it was still 138 degrees uh, in there. Uh, you couldn't quite touch them barehanded. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I took them out and let them finish cooling. So now they're hopefully softer than the original plate. The original plate, the file pretty much skates on it. It's, it's really hard. And we're going to do a little bit of a test here comparing the two to see if we got it soft enough to machine. You know, this is all flame cut, except for one edge uh, was a finished edge on the plate that we cut off. So we'll have one good surface to work from uh, to machine it up and clean it up. Edges cleaned up, wire wheeled, still a lot of mill scale, but I cleaned up all the slag edges a little bit with the grinder. Make it a little easier to machine. Three, I'm using a three insert cutter. It's about an inch and uh, I think a half wide. And it will span that in one cut. And it, these, I'm using this because these inserts are relatively inexpensive. So, and I have a few of them. It's gonna be tough on them. All right, there's the two pieces. About, about an eighth of an inch difference in width, and uh, but the wider one is about a quarter inch shorter. So this this piece is just to have. Who knows what I'll make that into? It's already got a hardy hole. Can make a nice little some kind of special anvil. If you have uh, been watching my videos for any length of time, uh, I built a. A leg vice stand slash striking anvil and out of that I built built it with a, a section scraper cutting edge that is usually made from AR 400 AR 500 type steel the bigger piece I use for the table and then and I'll put a link to building that uh, in the video here and then there was a couple smaller pieces, both about the same size, about this size here. This is one of them. And what I did was annealed these pieces. Uh, being, they, they are all heat treated and very tough and very hard um, material and you need to do something with it. I mean, I flame cut these and then these, the smaller ones, I um, annealed. Now, then I, these had flame cut edges and I machined the edges. Now I, I posted some videos of, and uh, shorts or whatever about um, that I machined these edges off. And so I made a nice square block and they're very nice and very smooth. And then I soaked it in vinegar 
uh, afterwards and that's why this is like this gray color it, it kind of gray patinas it and it got most of the scale and, and junk off of it by doing that and I was able to clean these up uh, it's about eight, eight inches long by five and three eighths wide uh, I'm not going to machine the edges anymore because they're really actually very nice they're just a milled finish but they're really nice what we're going to do is we're going to put some holes in it we're going to put some holes in it we're going to put a v-groove across it holes and holes and uh, make it into a nice little bench anvil uh, it's a nice piece of steel it's about an inch and uh oh about an inch and three eighths or so it weighs a little bit i don't know if you can make that out very well but this is my drawing and like i said i'll set a series of holes a series of few more holes over here will do and a couple holes in the v-groove area i'm going to uh face it off i got a two inch face mill carbide and uh, we'll give it a facing job and then we'll do all the rest of the machine work i will probably not necessarily but i'm probably going to heat treat this again and bring it back to a hardness level Okay, this came out just uh, just awesome. Uh, I took off a total of 25 thousandths off, and I have one little tiny, tiny spot here, but it's hardly anything. Probably another five would clean it all, but I'm probably going to grind this after I heat treat it. I really think I'll heat treat it. So, um, just to, it, it's it's cutting so so well, I'm, it's pretty, it's kind of on the soft side. So, uh, I'm gonna want it harder than that in use, so I, uh, I'll heat treat it and and uh, then I'll surface grind it. Side two, we're gonna take off 20 right off the bat. I decided we got 100% cleanup and no ridges at all, just beautiful. And we took out 95% of that uh, little chamfer there. It only goes from here to about there. And a little file cleanup and shoot, it'll be done. Just use an edge finder. We, the drawing is, I decided to use this side. This is the side that had that little uh, taper. So we'll, I'm probably gonna clean these edges up or at least this edge up anyway, so I have a soft edge, so that's okay. And the hole is not symmetrical on each side. This side has about a little more than a quarter of an inch of straight wall, so I think that might be better to have on the top side. So this is the side I'll put my groove into, the V, the v groove. And so I've kind of turned my drawing. It really doesn't really matter too much. So, uh, of where my holes are going to be. So, I think what I'll do is I'm actually going to change my thinking about it a little bit. And I'm going to put my side holes on the side that's shorter than this side. This is not quite in the middle. We'll just drill all our, all our holes. The... 
Now, no matter what, I'm gonna have a lot of tool changes. Uh, I'm gonna to try to minimize it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go along and spot drill all the holes, save those locations in the DRO, and then I can go along and maybe uh, drill them a little bit quicker, but it's gonna take me a few minutes to do this. <laughs> I'm using a slick stick. Uh, this is a paste lubricant by Hoogan. Uh, for annual cutters, I tell you, this is this stuff is great. You just kind of squish it up into the cutter. I put it in there before I put the cutter in, but add a little more here. But this is going through like butter. Uh, I'm pecking it uh, so I don't end up with a huge bird nest. And that way I can clear those chips out. But these cutters are just long enough to get through this. I've just uh, packed it in there, just rub the stick on there and pack it up in there quite a bit. I mean, it may be half an inch in there. Seems to be enough. These cutters have a center pin in them and there's no place for it to go so uh, I removed the center pin just pull it out which is um, that's kind of nice each one has their own center pin they're all the same size but um, yeah it's made to, to push out your slug but the slug will stick in like this one the three quarters slug still in there and I'll just take it over and I put this on a piece of copper and I can hold it and just tap that slug out See the burden that she gets, you continually feed it. That's why I'm pecking. And then you gotta clean that off. That's the uh, one disadvantage to an annual cutter is the bird nest thing. Uh, that plug just fell out. Now it's hotter than a pistol, but it just fell out. Okay, you're making stock. So my memories won't hear you cry. Maybe the wind will lead me back to you, but don't hold your breath. There. That's through the center of this and through the center of that. Line so I could line up on something. So that was the center line, and now I'm going to mark where the width of the groove.
should be that's one and we'll go down there so that's how wide it is and we have a center line we have some uh, gauging so we can uh, figure out where our V groove is well this is my setup I've set the block at 45 I have spacer blocks in here that match the width of this and I have it very tight uh, even hit none of I mean it it doesn't it, it's very very solid so I think it's gonna work I'm not gonna go real deep anyway and I'm just gonna use the scribe lines to guide me uh, where I need to be and we're a little shy of the top one here in the y, uh, X direction and we'll just kind of bring the table up uh, gently making passes back and forth and we won't take any real heavy cuts and until we're down to meeting the other scribe the bottom scribe line and over to meet the uh, top scribe line in the X and we'll use the Z to to do the bottom line as we bring it up the sides uh, this is only going to be five sixteenths of an inch di deep and the side measurement is about 0.4 or something so it's, a, it's under a half an inch so I have a half inch carbide cutter in there and uh, we'll just do it gentle and see how it goes Okay, this is the final. I just did a two, two in each direction, and I was a climb cut to clean up this surface a little bit. Pretty good, but this will make it better. for what it needs to be it's uh, accurate enough now I think I'm going to go in and cut a little groove a little relief groove down the uh, center all right I got a 1 8 inch end mill now I just kind of threw it in there I'm hoping that it's straight I didn't even check I think it I think it will be 
I moved it around till I was scratching on each side and it's pretty good. We're gonna eighth inch groove and uh, see how it goes. So we'll put a little lube in here. We're, we're not gonna be real aggressive with it. pretty good uh, this is still I, I got to do some deep burring and on the other side also on this hole and clean up these other ones a little bit I did a little bit already but and then uh, let's get it get all cleaned up and be ready to heat treat all right blocks all deburred all all the little edges everything uh, all cleaned up. I even cleaned up the inside there. Get the scale that was in here off and grease or whatever scale from the previous heat treat. I just kind of buffed it up. So we're ready to do a heat treat. Now, I've done a ton of research on what this steel is. Now, when I, the, the, the steel I had, the, the plate that, or the cutting edge, you know, I, I tested it with all I have is hardness the hardness file set up you know this tubason and it was in the 60s I was barely I had to drill a couple holes in it and I barely drilled it with carbide drills I did get a couple holes in it but it was very very tough and very hard to do I broke one carbide drill doing it um now the, all the research i've done on a supposedly it's either ar 400 or ar 500 type of steel that's what they make the, the these cutting edges out of supposedly now i don't know that what that's what this is made out of I, you know i'm just kind of stabbing in the dark um uh i know it was a caterpillar one though <laughs> i do know that uh but and and AR400 carbon content is a 0 0.2, 0.25. Uh, AR500 is, is usually about 0.3 or 0.31, depending on where you you look at it. Um, so really, it's a low carbon steel, and but it was sure hard and sure tough. So whether this is truly AR400, 500 is. I'm not 100% positive of that because of how hard it is. What I found is that they say like the maximum hardness you get is maybe Rockwell 47 on the C scale. Uh, so it, 47 you can drill with a regular drill, uh, with a regular high-speed uh, drill usually. Um, so I, 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 I'm not positive. So I'm going to... But I annealed it, and it, this is like was really easy to machine uh, once I annealed it. And I annealed it at a 1450 or 55, something like that. Um, I, 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 in the beginning of the video, I showed you me uh, annealing it and, what, and all that. Uh, and you know what? And it, it machines beautiful. Uh, very, very nice. Very easy to do. Easy to drill holes and uh, all that. Um, 
So I did anneal it for, with the information I found. I uh, used that temperature and now I'm going to harden it uh, or I'm going to attempt to harden it. Let me put it this way. So we're going to harden it, uh, attempt to heat treat it, austenize it um, at at 1525 and that's the information i found um i'm not going to go through the normalization stuff and all that i i just i need i want to get hard and then i'm going to temper it at probably 400 i think that's what i'm thinking um do it at 400 um i, I can't find real good information on the tempering temperature so we'll, we'll probably do it at 400 I, i'm going to do i'll look some more but and that's what I'm probably going to do. Um, just trying to be upfront here and honest with you. Uh, this is a thick piece of scale. It's a little over an inch, 1.3 roughly. And uh, so, you know, most most of your information you get, it's always per inch of thickness. You know, this is this will take a long time. You know, and I'm going to hold. So I'm going to hold it at oxidizing temperature for two hours. Usually, it's an hour per thickness is a good rule of thumb to follow. So I'm going to go with uh, an hour, two hours at, uh, at that temperature. And then I'm going to water quench it. Um, uh, basically, the, the, everything I found was if you want to try to get it hard, water quench it. <laughs> even Or even brine quench. So I'm not going to do a brine. I'm just going to do water test. You know, And it's a through, supposedly a through hardening steel. So you can actually get it hard all the way through. Well, I'm not... I'm not concerned about that. I'd like a good surface hardness. That's all I'm really concerned about. And uh, I'm, I'm going to, you know, pound on it, but I'm not going to pound on it very hard. Um, it, it's for knocking pins out, holding something in here in the slot. Um, you know, if it's round, to knock a pin out, knock a pin out, you know, all these holes. And, you know, maybe set a rivet doing leather work. Uh, it will be really nice. I've been finding I need something for leather work. Um, uh, if you want to, you know, do do rivets or uh, snaps, and just something really solid on a on the bench uh, that you can, you know, hammer a little bit on. So, and that's why I'm making it. Um, I've been, you've been using the edge actually for the leather because it's up high and you can get this into smaller spaces. So, if I can get a good surface hardness and uh, it's very smooth. There, it looks like there's lines, but you can't feel anything. Uh, I ran a diamond stone just over the top of it real quick uh, to see, and it's it's you know it's pretty good shape. And uh, I I'll prob if I get a good surface hardness, I'm going to grind it, uh, the the two flat sides, uh, just to make them really nice. Uh, anyway, that's the plan. So we're going to wrap this in foil to minimize. Uh, I have my uh, stainless foil here, and I'm going to uh, wrap it in, in that, put a piece of paper in. Um, it's a kind of a big package, uh, so uh, we'll use a lot of paper. And the paper is to burn up the oxygen. It will ignite, and it will burn the oxygen inside your envelope and help reduce scale. You will... If you do this right and you can get a nice tight seal uh, on your envelope, you get z almost zero scale. Uh, it really works well, uh, so we'll hopefully we'll get good results out of that. Okay, so this is like a foot wide or something. It kind of, you know, it comes in a roll, um, and this stuff's not really cheap. Uh, well, I bought this a few years ago, so I got it probably for a good price. Um, it's 10, 10 inches wide, two thousandths thick, they say, two thousandths, huh? yeah, and uh, 50 foot roll, so, but anyway, so we're going to, got my big heavy duty scissors here, cuts, cuts really easy with a good, good, good pair of scissors, right. I save all my scraps just about, uh, you never know when you might need them. <laughs> Yeah. 
Who should we get? Who's this for, huh? We got to do something. It's like Christmas wrapping. I know who. Two, Mr. Pete. From RR in the shop. Mr. Pete is a very good friend of mine. <laughs> Whenever we end up on the phone talking or something, we're on the phone for an hour. <laughs> it, is, it is great to be able to have, uh, have Mr. Pete as a friend, uh, a good friend. And uh, uh, I hope he keeps making videos. So, there we go. To the oven. All right. I'm going to put this on edge. So... We have man minimal contact with surfaces, and I think it will. I think it's gonna stay. Well, maybe not. All right, I have it on edge, a little on the tippy side, so I put a fire brick in here to help support, hold it up. It wants to lean that way, so that's pretty good. It's not going to be moving. I have a Hot Shot 1200 uh, from Bar Z Industrial, Stan Zinkowski. So I've already got this program, program number seven, and I have all the parameters in for it, and it's ready to go. So there's program seven. We'll just go over here to, oops, I went right by it. Program 7 to run, hit run, it's going. And uh, there you go. P pretty, pretty simple. It's uh, starting to ramp up here. This is a set point. That's the actual temperature inside. There we go. So this is the actual temperature inside. This is the set point. I, I have it to ramp up to the set point of um, 1525 in for take 30 minutes to get to that set point and you can see how it's at 107 it's at 111 it's a little bit ahead of the set point the the set point will ramp in in 30 minutes it will be at 1525 this gives it time to heat your material up slowly uh, that way and and get it all heated so when it does get to 6 1525 for two hours uh it will then it will then hold it at 1525 for two hours but if you ramp it up slow enough your your materials at 1525 to hold at 1525 it's not if you ramp it up real fast it may get to 1525 but your material through through throughout the material is not at 1525 and so you're still heating it for your soak period so you don't want to, you really don't want to do that. Um, you want to bring it up slowly, rant, and then hold it there at that temperature throughout. So the whole material is that temperature. This oven works awesome though. I love it. All right, we're going to let that go. We'll be back in a couple hours. Okay, time is up. Let's see if we can get this out of here. Uh, I forgot to size some tongs or anything for it, so... It might be a little sketchy, but we've got the bucket close by, so that's what it looks like in there. Very hot, very hot, very heavy. We got it. This will take a while to cool. It's still rumbling. A lot of heat in a big piece of metal like that. 
a lot of heat. Like I said, this water is probably almost 70 degrees already. Alright, this cooled off enough. I didn't go have lunch. And <laughs> I, I'm going to peel this off. I want it, I'd rather have it a little bit warm. Oh, no, it's not very warm, though. Um, and I'll throw it in the toaster oven. Uh, so about 400 degrees, and we'll get it tempered right away. We'll have to get that cut off. I'm going to show you here uh, how the, the black splotches right here. Let's see if we can do this here. So these two black splotches are from the paper. But there is literally no scale on there. That's why the foil. The foil process works really good. Make sure you put paper in it. And uh, this, it always, I've had great results with it. Basically zero scale. And when I do some knives, I do the same thing, and they come out awesome. We'll throw it right in there. Actually, we could ke we'll test. I'll do a little quick test of the hardness. It was less than 40. This is a 40. It was the small, lowest scale on the files here. And um, it was less than 40. Well, that does, it, it barely catches, so it, it's still probably around the same thing. No, I would say it's harder. 40, 45 um, doesn't really catch very much. A little tiny bit. So it's it probably right in there. Okay, so 50 catches real good. So it's under 50. Uh, so maybe about 45 somewhere in there um yeah this is not known for getting real hard so uh but it's harder than it was and that's what i was hoping to at least get it harder than it was and uh so it's not real hard um but it has this great ring to it it did not have that long lasting ring before i uh I didn't show you that, but there's, there's no cracks. Well, I've decided I'm not going to temper it. I'm going to leave it as is. It's just going to be a bench block. You're not going to pound on it really that hard directly at all. Uh, I'm going to grind both flat surfaces, I think, just to clean them up and everything it doesn't seem like it warped it it didn't warp at all so we'll do that I did the bottom side already now I'm gonna do the top uh, you know it decided it really cleans it up a lot it takes a little while to do this so I'm not gonna show you every inch of it <laughs> See, it's not as flat as you might think. Of course, heat treat can always change things and all that, so that's not really too bad. That's uh, that was only about a thousand. The bottom side I took off about fifteen thousand. Well, that was a uh, half a thousand, and I redressed it before I did it and all that before I took this last pass and. You know, I probably should make another pass. Not sure why it's kind of gray color over here and a little bit different finish even. Uh, just wondering if that actually got harder in those areas. Okay, we're going to 
give this a quick little measure just to out of it's more of a curiosity thing um to say you know it, it kind of spins funny like a center here um it feels pretty flat the way it floats a little bit even though it has holes in it uh, but there are many degrees of flatness and uh, we're going to I'm going to run this down now this is a tense indicator now you cannot see that I know but we're just gonna get an idea we're just gonna come up there and run this through all the way down So that, that's less than a tenth of variation from end to end. Like the needle almost doesn't even move type of thing. So that way it's pretty good. Let's see how this is crosswise. Now this is I call the top with the groove. And uh, we'll slide this one across here. Less than a tenth until about, until right about where that hole is. We get a little bit of, uh, of rise right in here. So, you know, like a tenth or two. So a couple tenths right there. So that's that's pretty good it's not the best quality but it... and we have a, a, about two tenths across the distance there also so you know that's uh not too bad it's fairly parallel um, um, not perfect, but it's a bench block and it will work just fine. I, I'm, I was thinking I might even put feet on it anyway, <laughs> a little, uh, rubber feet. So we'll, uh, dig some out. I think I have some of those. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. And uh, we'll, you know, may hopefully get to do some more uh, projects like this. I've got a couple other things lined up I need to get done. So we'll, uh, we'll be getting on them since this is out of the way. And I have some knife making going on. So uh, try to, got a, I get a lot of things going on. Okay, we'll take you guys in the next one. And thanks again for sticking around and watching.